ADE's ILT has worked with Sam and me to help set the course for Animus Valley. These ladies have been essential in planning and delivering high quality professional development for our staff during PLC time. In addition, these ladies proactively communicate with stakeholders and assist in facilitating and fostering communication channels within Animus Valley. Data is used to assist the ILT in determining next steps for the building. The focus of our ILT this year has been peer observations and instructional design and delivery. Animus Valley's ILT has routinely articulated their purpose, practice, and focus on results by making the work and progress towards our stated goals public. These ladies have spearheaded peer observations as a form of collaborative professional development. Animus Valley's ILT represents a driving force in the daily work of our, of our school. The function, participation, and behaviors of this ILT are internalized in their practice. Uh, I find the ILT has impacted us here in a very positive way in, in, uh, in the manner of being able to share out loud teaching strategies that have worked in the past and, and also it also provides us with a mission for the future. The ILT team is amazing. They do so much work for us. Um, they go above and beyond anything that you could even imagine. The instructional leadership team has provided myself with opportunities to learn more about IB curriculum and our PYP program here at Animus. They um, plan our PLCs for us, especially with our IB culture here at our school. Um, sometimes as new teachers it's hard for us to ex know exactly how to implement those IB things and um, our ILT has been teaching our PLCs and so they've been giving us different teaching strategies. So we're going to start our voices in the room today um, around this question. What are thinking strategies to you? We're going to do an inquiry circle. So if you could please stand up. We're going to make a big circle in the middle. So the concept behind this is I have the yarn, so it's my turn to talk. And so I will answer the question um, how I see fit. And then I'll get to throw it to somebody. It's nice if you make eye contact so that they know the yarn is coming. And um, it's similar to the Kagan strategy of a round robin. Um, it's just adding another element of the yarn and then the inquiry so we can see how we're all connected. Okay, so thinking strategies to me um, is a way for students to express what's happening in their brain. Thinking strategies are a way for um, students to connect with um, the text that they're reading. Thinking strategies for me are a way for kids to de dig deeper and think more about what they're learning. I actually did this, um, I do this with my first graders and I use it as a way to just begin our um, IB unit. Um, so our goals for today, our content objective is that we can all define and identify the different thinking strategies and explain how to apply them in our classrooms and use the language of different thinking strategies to express our own thinking as well as to be able to prompt our students to use the language of thinking. This is Allison and my lesson plans for today in the workshop model. So it tells what you're doing, what the teacher's doing, and what the, it looks like what the students are doing. And it's also a nice visual to start this way. We're going to explore this idea of a catch and release workshop model today um, because that allows that opportunity to reflect on our learning. Barb, you had that one, which is great, and our choices and to support student understanding and metacognition. The first, um, for our first release time, um, we are going to be breaking up into groups. And I wanted to model for you um, using schema because it has been one that I have introduced with my students. And so our first task today is you're going to um, come up with a definition. So um, one part of the catch and release is to, um, when you catch a group of students, you want to then have an exemplar or an example of something that you notice. So as Kelly and I were going around, we were monitoring, we were coaching, and we were supporting groups one-on-one. -on -one. It gave us actually a lot of time to meet with individual teams. And so drawing inferences is going to give us just a quick synopsis of their definition and then their image. On the thinking strategy of drawing inferences, and the definition that we came up collaboratively was 
connecting personal experiences with clues from the text or situation to create new understanding. The second part is we need to give our students, as well as the language ourselves, to prompt our students to engage in different thinking strategies. So what does it sound like? And so on your poster, you're going to develop your own text of both what does the teacher sound like in these situations, and what does the student's language. Uh, monitoring meaning is going to share their two sentence frames, the one from the teacher and a one from a student. I heard lots of great thinking and articulation of specifically how we want our students to respond to these different prompts. So I think that was awesome. Let's hear from them, and then we'll do a cheer. And we have one more section to go. Oh, yeah. I'll stick so ours was monitoring meaning, and our teacher kind of question was, um, what makes sense? You might really like that instead of saying, does this make sense? And they say yes or no. They have to say, what makes sense? And then getting the kids to articulate, you know, this makes sense. Being really specific, though, like, it makes sense what the character's doing or whatever it is, but it makes sense to me, and they're describing what that actually is. But we were talking about how that really takes some practice and some modeling because mm -hmm. otherwise you ask a kid and they say, well, it all makes sense. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> How can we get to that evidence? How can we get to that specific? So that was just one example. Uh, one thing, um, one question I have for you is um, who was doing the work during the workshop model? Say it if you know it. You guys were. Were Kelly and I working really hard? No. We, we, set, we <laughs> set it up. We provided you with the materials, and we provided you with the guidance during the mini lessons. But the one amazing thing with the workshop model is it gives you time to really confer with students. If you have expectations for what they're doing during those catches, um, and then when you release them again, it gives you a lot of time to conference and then to take them deeper. You know, I felt like I had great conversations with people, and then I was able to give you one little just phrase or sentence to take you to that next level of thinking. Um, so that's great with the workshop model.